and welcome to my channel. So today we're doing a flip through of this new book from Kirby Rosanis. It's out today, which is February the 4th. I'm so excited. I don't usually get books on launch day. But yeah, Fragile World. Uh, it, here's the size of my hand compared to it. It's a little shorter than A4, but it's a square book. Um, it's got a sort of, well, it's got this sort of embossed color, cover for the turtle. I don't know if you can see, it's got a bit of a shine there, whereas this is more matte. And that's the back, same effect. This tiger is fab. Uh, but yeah. And just a note as well, a royalty from the sound of this book will be donated to the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation. Uh, more for that inside. Now, I've seen flip throughs online from some early copies that went out, but this is the first time I'm literally going to be flipping through this book with you for the first time. So yeah, let's get started. Oh, so excited. All right, okay. Oops, it's frightening me already. Okay, so we just have our intro page. We have a little turtle on the beach break, breaking out of his egg in the sand. I'll uh, we'll just move this across here for the spread. Um, so we have our usual This Book Belongs To page. And it's illustrated by Kirby Rosanis. Uh, it's quite standard these days that he does make this a spread. That, that you know coherently fits together as opposed to two separate pages uh, but yeah and again now so here is the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation uh, a little bit more about their registered charity number so this is a UK charity I'm assuming in the US versions there will be a, a more localized uh, version um, but it's yeah their bid to save endangered animals around the world doesn't actually have a link I will have a look and see if I can find a link to the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation if I find one I'll leave it in the description below along with as well where you can buy this book on Amazon and book depository and all that sort of nice stuff um, now this book is as I've mentioned the UK edition which comes out today the in the US I don't believe it's out until March but you can buy the UK edition off of book depository so if you want it early then you can do it that way. Anyway, so we've got a little note here from Kirby and then we are into the book. So we're straight into a spread and actually from the flip throughs that I've seen before, I know this exists, so I'm gonna cheat. At the back of the book, instead, this is not a seek and find book. If you're familiar with Kirby's older books, this book is not a seek and find with hidden objects, but the place at the back where usually they tell you where the you know where the bits and pieces are uh, this is telling us about the animals so I'll use that as a reference so here we have the snow leopards and it's gorgeous it's obviously very much in Kirby style because the snow leopard is part of the landscape oh, I love it little kitty um, yeah so we've got some little rabbits here as well and some mountain goats and all sorts of things but yeah, nice big snowy one. It's even snowing in the background. Yeah. And then we're on to the next spread, which is two separate pictures. The only problem I have with this book, it's the, it's the thing with most of his books, uh, is they are double-sided images, which means no alcohol markers, unless you buy two copies of the book. I've seen people do that. Uh, it's, you know, it's viable. It's not the most expensive of books, so definitely a possibility. So... These are the New Zealand Lesser Short-Tailed Bats. So, he's cutie. Hello, cutie. Um, you could, though you could do it as dark and uh, broody and a bit of a Halloween picture if you wanted. And then we have the Mountain Gorillas. I'll just, I'll try not to move the book back and forth too much, but I think it's inevitable. <laughs> it's easier to just have it centralized when it's a single picture. But yeah, this is the Mountain Gorilla. And he's got a mountain on his back. I love this waterfall that's down this. You know, you see flip throughs online. It's never quite the same as when you're looking at it with your own book. So the paper is good. The paper is pretty much the same as it normally is. It's um, the editions. I did notice when I was at the back as well just now, you can see that this is a stitched copy in the UK. Uh, I know in the past, the US editions, sometimes their books fall apart so if you don't like your book falling apart you might want to also consider getting the UK edition 
because it is definitely sewn. Now it looks like there's some missing there. There's a hole there. Let me see if I'll have to look and see if I can find that. Where the uh, binding was just broken. Anyway, uh, we have ourselves what we've we got. So this is the Southern Rock Hopper penguins. Love penguins. Yeah. So cute, and it's the little baby one. Um, also, because it does give the names at the back, it doesn't mean you can look up what they look like in real life and, uh, yeah, get, get your pictures looking quite accurate. So here we have some frogs. These are... Oh, look, I'll close my page. I always do that. I do it because I, I stroke the page and I, put, and I close the back. So these are the Lima leaf frogs, critically endangered. I think most things in this book are critically endangered, unfortunately. A little snail here on the leaf. Now we have ourselves a double page spread. Oh look, I did it again. I closed the book. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put a bookmark in the back so I can uh, at least find my place again. So these are the ring-tailed lemurs. We got a full spread of these. Uh, he's eating his little berries. Really nice. Uh, you'll notice it's less gimmicky these pictures. I say gimmicky, uh, you know what I mean, and this is an example of what I mean. We'll go back to these uh, looking at the single pages. So we have ourselves a little critter living on top of this critter, which is Saiga or Saiga antelopes uh, from Kazakhstan, Russia, and that, these sort of places. Funny little cute nose there. Um, but yeah, so they're living on the back and this is what I kind of mean by when I mentioned about the uh, Kirby's sort of gimmicky style this one where you have like the animal is part of the landscape But I've noticed in this book at least with some of the pictures. They are just more. They're just they're just pictures if you <laughs> oh, I'm sounding crazy now, but you know what I mean. There's no fancy um, imagery or sort of um, juxtapositions of backgrounds or foregrounds that tie in this one obviously is I don't need to look at that I don't think that's a polar bear yeah so we have our polar bear that is part of the iceberg you know what they say about the icebergs that you know you only see the the tip of it what's happening is all underneath and there's our polar bear I, I like that one yeah I like that one a lot not sure the seals would be swimming around him though because <laughs> I'm pretty sure they would be supper anyway so we have ourselves another spread here these are chimpanzees by the looks of it uh, yeah chimpanzees nice sort of jungle spread here but this is like a normal picture because it's just the chimps we've got there eating the fruit they're up in the treetops oh though they are smiling he's a happy chimp here see him there's a big smile oh love that Uh, so these can be done as two separate pages but they're also kind of connected he, Kirby does them occasionally where he has like the two animals that are virtually the same but not quite the same just virtually the same and then um, they're looking at each other so these ones have both got sort of the wild flowers growing on their backs like from the plains was these buffalo uh, American bison so yeah so that they're from like the american plains but we've got ourselves you know lots of flowers and wildflowers and things if you like doing hair that'd be fun you can get some good you could do them traditional you could do them you know you don't have to do them realistic you do them as opposing colors all sorts of things Right, so we have Queen Alexandra's birdwing butterflies, which are obviously endangered, as is everything in this book. Uh, but yeah, I, I would definitely want to look that one up to see what they look like in real life. But we've got all the flower. I do love flower. So we've got lots of flowers all around it. And then sort of opposite, not the same spread, but connected. We still have the flowers. Oh, I love this one though. I, I, I'm starting to think that I'm getting a bit of a thing for buzzy bees. So 
great big bee, but it's got all the world flowers on the back and all the, the bees are feeding from the pollen as well. Yeah, that one might be one of the first I do. Depends what else is lying behind. Okay, so this is what everybody's going to be doing next year for Shark Week. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> um, so we have ourselves a couple of sharks. Are these great whites? Uh, yeah, great white sharks. Trying to nom on the seal. But yeah, lot of great if you like doing fish. Well, you'll need to like doing fish for that one. I like how this one kind of... The, well, they both do. Their bodies are obviously the sharks, but it kind of fades away into being the fish. It's quite nice. Okay, we have ourselves a single picture. What is this? This is mandrills. I think the, are they, they're the ones with like the really sort of colourful faces, aren't they? I think. But anyway, he's in the... Um, it makes me think a little bit of the this is like the mandrill version of the green man you know how it's just like the face buried in amongst the trees uh the leaves and the branches and stuff of the, that traditional green man picture this is like that version of that but mandrill style and then we have what we've we got this is a philippine eagle he's got the mountains and the trees and all this sort of thing but yeah, another one that I would definitely want to look up the colours of the, the actual eagle. I mean, you tend to think of eagles as being sort of goldens and uh, maybe some blacks and things like that. But you never know. Right. This, okay, so this is a spread. Uh, what are these? These are humphead wrasses. They're in the coral reefs of Asia. So yeah, hopefully well, he looks like he could be colourful. But even if he, even if these weren't colourful fish, um, you can obviously do the background all sort of corally, lots of blues and oranges. Little fish. Next we have what have we got? Black-footed ferrets from North America. Love a ferret. So we have ourselves a family of ferrets here. I mean, you could do these as two separate pages if you wanted, but really it's a spread. Yeah, I love them. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well, we know what well, that is. <laughs> so this is a giant panda. Yeah, um, I love pandas. They were, I play a game called World of Warcraft. It's an online game, an MMO, and uh, one of the races in that is kind of like a... Well, it's, it's a panda that walks. I play it. <laughs> so my character is a panda. Um, so I do have a bit of a soft spot for them. I'll have to do that. I'll have to figure out, because obviously it's interesting, because pandas are black and white. So it does require a little bit of thought about how you would actually um, colour a black and white picture. But I will give it my best go. Oh, oh, and I love colouring leaves. So I'm going to have a field day with that one. Do you know what? I might do that one first. Maybe just do one of them as opposed to the whole spread. We'll see. Though it could be quite quick if we do keep it black and white. Except nothing is truly black and white, is it? There's always undertones. So, yeah. Okay, what have we got here? We have got ourselves some form of hippopotamus. Yeah, the common hippopotamus, which is apparently not so common anymore, unfortunately. Uh, but he's got loads of, um, almost like the lilies that are in the river are all on his back as well. And he has all his bird friends sitting on the back as well. And then we have ourselves another bat. So this is the Philippine naked, back, naked backed fruit bats. That was a mouthful. Definitely not something I say in a hurry or when I've had too much to drink. Right, but <laughs> he's cute. He's got a whole thing in his mouth as well. That's what I'm like with cookies. I just can't stuff a whole one in my mouth. <laughs> I digress. I'm sorry. If you're new to my channel, I, I'll, I'll, yeah. So he's cute. Oh, look at this one. Okay. Ah, oh, we like this one. So this is, oh, they're Jaguars. It says jaguars. There's only one on the page. 
So then obviously they're talking about the race of uh, animal breed. But he's gorgeous. In the running water. And I keep stroking him like he's <laughs> like he's a real cat. Uh, but yes, if you that that could, you can get some really nice effects because he's obviously he's swimming. That's nice because he's swimming. Well done, Kirby, for finding different ways to depict these animals. Right, so we have whooping cranes. Presumably, they go whoop 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 whoop. whoop. Right, so. And they're looking like they're about to take off, but he's got supper. Well, not really supper, is it? Bit of a light snack. Light snack. Back on the cookies. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so we have ourselves a single picture here. And this is, well, I don't need to look that up, but I think he's an, what is it, an Indian elephant? Because I've got small ears. I've shut my page, I'm sorry. It'd be nice if I learned. Yeah, so. Asian elephant. You can tell the difference between Asian and African elephants because the, the Asian ones have small ears and the African ones have big ears. Ah, see, I, I do know something. He's living in the ruins though. That's really cool. We've got a couple of monkey friends. I love this. Look, the stairway is coming down his head. So obviously this is one of the, the gimmicky type pictures. But it's got the, the walkway coming down his head. Really nice, that. And then we have this one. So these are forest owlets. For all you owl fans living in the in the tree trunk. Oh, there's so many nice pictures here. I'm gonna enjoy colouring this wood. Like this tree tree stump. You can get so many nice browns and you know dark colours, but get some warmth in there, some reds, deep reds. I can see it now. I'd have to look up what these are. But I'm assuming they're probably brown. A lot of owls are brown. Okay, oh, well, actually, this is a spread. So, what have we got? He is... Oh, I have to turn the page. Hang on. I don't know how to say that. Gariel? I've never even heard of it. I know. I, I knew he was a freshwater uh, crocodile. You can tell the freshwater crocodiles because they have this really, really thin um, nose. Thin long nose. I love his this guy. When I first turned the page, it looked like a baseball cap. <laughs> Just me? Okay. Just me. Um, but yeah, so we have ourselves a nice crocodile here. He's got, again, we have the vegetation growing out of his back. He's kind of going for a walk under the water here. Yeah. And another spread. We have ourselves some seals. So these are Galapagos sea lions. There we go. So they're sitting on the beach, as sea lions tend to do. Then we do have ourselves the, the breaking water coming in here. So that's where the uh, tide line is. But yeah. Oh, another cat. Oh, this is the one from the back cover. I remember now, isn't it? Yes. Do you know what? I love this. I might even... I've never done, like, sort of, you know, those sort of wacky... Not wacky, but, you know, off-the-wall types of uh, colour things. I always tend to do them as a bit realistic, but I I, I would do that colourful. So I love this. And really, really dark line art on this as well. Um... We've got all our butterflies. But yeah, that's a really bold, punchy one. It's meant to be dark. It's meant to be striking. I don't know how I'd do it. Maybe I'll be one of these people that does buy two copies of the book just so I could do one, like the back cover, and then you could do one as like a traditional tiger, which I didn't look up. Hang on, let me tell you. So it's a Sumatran tiger. And next to this is the black rhinoceros. He has the tree growing out of him. Oh, he's got a little little leopard or something sitting up the tree as well. Like he's on the savannah. We've got the uh, giraffe eating out as well. He's like a giant, giant rhino. And this is a bit like, um, you know, the hyenas like on the laughing rock. Yeah, there's a lot going on in that picture. At first, you just think of it as being the rhino and then you just spot all the little details. So this is kind of a spread, but you can do it separately. We have ourselves, what are they, some sort of parakeet. Um, 
thick-billed parrots from northern Mexico. So this is going to be really colourful. I already know that before colouring it. But they're parakeets, they're going to be bright. But we've got some nice pine cones here. So it's going to be, you could do this in really sort of muted background and then the parrots will pop. We have, wow, there's a lot of pictures in this book. Um, so this is the turtle from the front cover. And I'll tell you exactly what he is. He is a hawksbill tur turtle from, doesn't say, just tropical reefs. I guess he gets around. Turtles do tend to get around, don't they? Around the globe. So, yeah. And then we've got ourselves a whale shark. So he's another one under the sea, hoovering up the fish or the plankton. I can't remember. The ones with the big mouths, aren't they? The ones that just hoover up plankton. So we have a giant double page spread here of a, what is he? Ethiopian wolf. So we have our main wolf, but then we have our family of wolves living on the back on the back of him, including some playing cubs. So like the background. Oh. Some meaty pictures in this. So these are axolotls. I'm not sure what they are. Some sort of um doesn't say. A bit like that, but they're kind of amphibian-y type things, aren't they? Look, he's obviously swimming on this underwater. So they do, but they've got legs. Oh, so I don't need to look this one up. This is a orangutan. It's like cuddling his forest. Because, you know, it's all being chopped down. And then opposite, we have some koala bears. Mother and baby, let me just say, yeah. Australia again lots of nice lush greenery and you can have your because koala bears are usually sort of aren't they grey sort of grey and white and then we have I presume these are blue whales yeah blue whales spread of those it's nice that if we've got ourselves a bit of man in there I suppose in a way most of these ones have been shown just totally in the wild, but we, we're seeing how these are living under, you know, we're all sailing about up top, not knowing what's going on underneath. Oh, two separate ones. So, these are Amur, Amur, A-M-U-R, um, leopards. So he's a nice snowy one as well. He's because he's from um, far eastern of... Russia, so he's like a snow leopard. And then we next to him we have red panda, another panda, but a red one. Again, he's living in the snow. Where's that? Oh, so because he, he lives in Nepal. So yeah, a bit chilly up there. Right, sorry, sorry, I ran out of space on my phone. <laughs> Whoops. Right, so red panda, that's what we did. So on to our antelope. Now we have, what is he? He is called, they are Adaxes, and they're antelopes found in the Sahara Desert in Africa. So we have our antelope that is part of the terrain, it's part of the, like the sand dunes, I guess they are. I don't think they're mountains, well they might be mountains. Uh, but you know, his actual body is part of the landscape. And then we've got his little antelope friends, Adax friends, eating, nomming, grazing on his head and everything. So yeah, next we have, well they look like manatees, what are these? Oh, dugongs, uh, which live in the shallow waters of the edges of the Indian and Pacific. They do look like manatees though, so I assume they're the Pacific version of, um, of a manatee. Um, yeah, so we have ourselves a few tropical fish there, turtles, jellyfish, it's all happening here. And our dugongs. Right, what have we got next? Oh, come on. Okay, so this is another one of those spreads that doesn't have to be done as a spread because they're two separate images. And these are Greater Sage Grouse from Northern America. I'll have to look those up. They look like they were a bit of a face-off, didn't they? Feathers flying, literally, in that case. 
here. What have we got now? Okay, so this is two separate pictures. So we have. Oh, I'll shut the back. I keep shutting this back page. I'm sorry. I'm so I, I'm annoying myself. If it makes you feel better. Um, so these are sea otters. No, American burying beetles first. So they're flying beetles. If you're not a fan of beetles, you might not want to think about them flying. Landing in your hair, your ears. Ah, oh, I'm evil. Sorry. <laughs> you don't want to think about that though. It'll be fine. Right. So yeah. So we have ourselves as well. It's like a. Oh, that's a bird skull, because that is a beak. Okay. And then on to, we'll get away from beetles. We'll go on to our cute little otter. Oh, now, I, didn't Danny Buttons just have a tag for otters? I found one, yay. Right, so this is a sea otter from the Pacific Ocean. I've seen them in, um, I've been to, What's it called? The Monterey on the in California. They've got a really big um, sea sea life aquarium there. Like a, not like a performing one. It's like a proper sea life one. And they had otters there. They're so cute. And they float on their backs. But he's got a little friend sitting on his head. Not a crab friend. Um, next we have. Okay, so this is a spread. We have a spread of these types of uh, hyenas or wild dogs. Let's have a look. Uh, African wild dogs. So they're obviously running through the. Well, you don't need me to tell you. They're running through like the, the brush. Another a couple of them though. These pictures in this book. Kirby's really relied on the. Uh, on the dark grayscale elements of it. I mean, I don't mind that kind of thing, but I know some people balk at um, heavy grayscale, or heavy, you know, dark. Right, so marine iguanas. Fortunately, there's so many pictures in this book that even you don't. Whenever I buy a book, I never buy a book thinking I'm going to colour every picture. I just need to, but you know, know that I'm going to colour enough pictures in it to make it worth it. And there is certainly plenty in this one. So we have some iguanas. What did I say? Marine iguanas. So he's like floating. This is like a riff off of that. Um, you know, there's the turtle, isn't there, which has people living on his back. This is like a swimming, floating iguana. And he's got his little little friends living on his back as well. Two separate pages, though they are kind of linked in theme anyway. So these are Kangaroo Island Dunnets. What are these? Doesn't really say what they are. Oh, a donut. It looks like some kind of... Um, well, he's got the long nose, so that's more sort of like a bit like a vole, isn't it, rather than a mouse. But uh, they're very cute. Lots of fur, floof, fluffy, fluffy critters. And then we've got this one, which is a European hamster. Who knew that European hamsters... Sorry, I'll get you in picture. I should have done that before I flipped at the back, sorry. Uh, the European hamster... He's going to be a major floof, and we've got ourselves one of those, um, you know, dandelion things. So lots of floof, and he's in the uh, the wildflowers. That's going to be a nice picture to do. Right, so next, we're getting near the end. So we have ourselves, I have to look this up, Chinese pangolin. And he looks a bit like a... Um, Oh, that, both of them, sorry, that's a spread. Just he looked different because he was, I didn't look properly. Ignore me. So this is a spread of Chinese pangolins. So they kind of look like, um, I don't know. What do they have, what are they called? Armadillos. It's got the armoured, the plated skin, isn't it? So perhaps in the same family. Again, lots of leaves so around it. I'll have, to, I'll have to look them up to see what how they're coloured, what colours they are. So we have ourselves what looks like they're narwhals, are they? Yes. So these are narwhals, another spread, uh, and they live in, these ones are in the Arctic. So I guess these are all icebergs, you know. Yeah. Lots of uh, cold colours in that, like cold cool greens and uh, blues 
love a narwhal. Now these are definitely two separate pictures. So we have, um, what have we got? Polynesian ground doves. So running around, sitting around on their tree stump. And then next to them, we've got European eels. I like that he's, you know, he's not gone for the, for the, oh, I just noticed that the pages are numbered. I've never seen that before. That must be because they're giving the descriptions at the back so that people can definitely find which animal is which. Um, but yeah, he's not just gone for the, you know, the, the ones that tug on the heartstrings of being endangered. He has gone like, gone for all of the things. So these are, what did I say they were? What kind of eels? European eels from freshwater. Oh, this is a spread. Um, and these are, oh, I've got to turn the page here as well. Cape rock jumpers. So from South Africa. I feel like they want to be bright. I hope they're bright. I'll have to look them up. But this certainly looks like, uh, I can just, so you, you know, sometimes you just look at a picture and you know what colours you'd like to see for part of it, even though I don't know what these birds look like. I just, I'm just even just thinking of the background. So we have two single pages here. So these are, what are these called? Have I skipped a page? I've skipped a page. Right. Okay, so that's a spread. Ooh. So, these are Hector's dolphins, but look at this, they look, they've got mark. I've not heard of Hector's dolphins, but they've got markings on them that makes you think of like killer whales and orcas, hang on, uh, New Zealand, they are the smallest and rarest marine dolphin in the world. Um, yeah, but they, they get caught by f fishermen, I'll have to look them up. But yeah, unless he's just done that as like highlights, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it looks like markings, doesn't it? I will definitely look them up. Right, so this is a single page. We have hooded grebes. Hooded grebes. So I think they're quite colourful if I remember. Though they're in the water. They're actually in the water. And I guess we've got these little things up that's almost maybe like seaweed. You know, that flotsam and stuff floating on the water and then next to them we've got I think I know what these are yeah Tasmanian devils they put the Taz in Tasmania for you Looney Tune fans nice palm uh, leaves here though yeah and then we've got a uh, spread which I think might be the last judging by the uh, index at the back. So this is the Galapagos penguins again. Two, a couple from the Galapagos Isles. Yeah, they got their two, two little rock, rock hops. They're not rock hoppers. I don't know why I said that, ignore me. But they got their two little piles of rocks to sit on, but they are all, uh, all underneath swimming. Love that. So, um, Oh, they're the only penguins found north of the equator. There you go. Bit of trivia for you as well. And then, yeah, and then that's it. That's where we're into the... My one has got a bit of missing stitching. I mean, fortunately, it's in the middle and not the end. So I've got the stitching down here. That's fine. I'm not in any worries at all that this book will fall apart. But yeah, so that's... We, we do have some little images, by the way. That So you can colour on these uh, information pages tree stump and some wildflowers what else have we got We've got the marine ones coral and jellyfish fish and then yeah and then on the back page just some flowers uh, we do have the information here for micro Amara books which is all their um all their social media and the like and then we've got kirby's other books and this is the puzzle. I've seen this puzzle. It looks really cool. I should have got it for Christmas, shouldn't I? I didn't even think of it until I saw it there. Uh, uh, yeah. So, as a reminder, 
I will leave a link down below to where you can buy this, including um, if you want to, if you're in the USA and you want to buy this book now and not wait till March, then I will leave a link to it on Book Depository. Uh, sometimes Book Depository is better anyway because they do offer free shipping worldwide, um, which is a really nice touch. And they can, they're actually part of Amazon. I don't, I don't even know why. I, I know Amazon own book depository anyway i will um i'll leave links to everything everywhere <laughs> that you can find it and i will look up this um this wildlife people the david shepherd wildlife foundation so if they do have a website or anything then i will leave a link to them and then you can see all the work because part of the money that uh you spend if you buy this book does go to the wildlife foundation and you can just see what your money is going towards supporting so thank you so much for watching. Sorry it was a bit of a long flip. It's uh, <laughs> it, was, it took me like, you know what I'm like. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Um, it really helps the channel. It'll help other people find this flip through as well, which I'm sure everybody will be interested in seeing, even though there's another million of them going around. They're not, there's none quite like mine, is there? And um, if you're not part of this, uh, if you've not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel and if you hit the little bell you'll get a notification of any time i upload new videos so what do you think is this a win do you do you miss the hidden objects i hear so many people say that they they're not a fan of the hidden objects but is there anybody out there who misses the hidden objects because there, there are none in this book um and do you like perhaps the the fact that his artwork a lot of his artwork is a bit more for want of a better word serious like this it's less gimmicky we do have some where we've got like the animals on the backs but some of them are just like this is a regular there's nothing fancy about this there is nothing gimmicky there are no uh, it's the first time that i look at a picture and i i wouldn't know that it was it was uh created by Kirby whereas you know you look at some of the other pictures you look at a picture like that and it's like yeah that looks like Kirby that looks like Kirby and then you'll do a, a normal picture and it just doesn't have his trademark style do you like that let me know in the comments anyway I hope you have a great day if you're getting this book let me know as well maybe we should do um, like a color along let me know about that what do you think I will go I'm talking too much I hope you have a great day. Take care and see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.